Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to another yes or no pick a card reading. This one is going to be a little bit different because I'm using the Black Moon Oracle cards instead of tarot cards. So we're just going to see how this goes. Go ahead and pick your card. As usual, it's piles one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and number ten. Okay, card number one. Black Moon Lilith. Isn't that cool that I was just saying that this is the Black Moon Oracle deck and the first card we get is Black Moon Lilith. I gotta go with a yes on this one. Partly because of that synchronicity and just because I feel like Lilith is... I don't... I mean misunderstood might be a little bit of an understatement. I understand that she is considered, you know, this mostly malevolent force in astrology and in mythology, but she really has, like right here, it's mystery. This is looking deep within, uncovering secrets, and obviously Lilith is always that character that stands her ground, stands in her truth and who she is. You know, legend has it that, you know, she was the first wife of Adam and she didn't want to be subservient to him. You know, she didn't want to be Eve. She didn't want to play out uh, that subserv subservient female paradigm. So she went off and of course other legends have it that she like spawned all the demons and <laughs> all kind of stuff like that. So, you know, she's a complicated and complex figure to say the least. But I feel like she's here to be, well, you know, the first thing that literally just popped in my head, she's here to be redeemed. I think Lilith is having her redemption arc, possibly as part of what we're doing as we move into the age of Aquarius and, you know, the rebalancing of the masculine and feminine energies. I, I'm, this is a really complex card. I bet a lot of you have a lot of like complex questions who, who picked this one. Um, but I really feel like it's a yes probably a complicated yes, but there's like a lot, a lot of depth here. So cool, but we'll give you a yes. Okay, pile two. Virgo, I analyze. That's a yes. Also gives you a hint that what you are asking about is going to need some analysis. This is a chance to be grounded and left-brained. You, This is not a time to be, you know... Don't be emotionally reactive and don't blindly trust your, trust your intuition. I mean, obviously, as a tarot reader, I'm pretty into following my intuition. That's something, but that's something I've developed recently. And I had to go through a whole 10 year paradigm of learning to trust my logic and become rational. So here, you know, follow your intuition. Yes, but only if it's also backed up by your rational mind, you know, check yourself. Think about all the facts. Don't like succumb to your like subconscious's fear mongering. Analyze the situation. Analyze the situ situation. So this is a yes, but it's like a cautious yes. It's go carefully. Um, check your facts. You know, plan your route. Don't rush into anything. This is definitely a careful, cautious yes. And pile number three. Moon. Soul. This is a yes only if it is entirely aligned with your own inner truth and inner guidance. Do not do what other people want you to do. Do not like flow with like the social currents. This right here, soul. You need to get aligned with your soul. This is a yes if your decision is coming from your soul from the very resonance of your soul. So you need to look like way deep on this one, guys, way deep, right down into the very frequency of your consciousness and figure out what like the absolute purest version of yourself would do. You know, what would your soul do? What would your higher self do? That's really how I see this. So it's a yes, but again, only if you were looking at your soul's guidance not external factors for this one. Okay, card number four. Mercury, 
mind. This is a yes. Really similar to one of the other cards, this is also a message of you have to be careful and analytical on this one. You're being asked to lean into mental energies, your left brain, your rationality, your logic. You need to think about what you are doing. I feel like a lot of people are feeling really impulsive or emotionally reactive and that they just want to like launch into things or that they are worrying about things unnecessarily. So it's like when our mind and our intuition are unaligned, then we worry because our intuition is like sending us these like fear impulses and then our mind runs with it and finds a bunch of things to be paranoid about. So I feel like, you know, Mercury coming up here really wants you to like purify all of that and like just you need to get objective if you can get an objectivity, th this would be a yes. This is a yes as long as your situation checks out, like as long as all of the facts check out, then you will have your yes. Card number five, Pisces, I believe. This is an invitation to like way deep dive into your subconscious and into your your intuition. This is a yes if you are leaning into your intuition like entirely. This is Pisces. This is become permeable. See through your own shadows. See through your own darkness. You need to trust entirely in yourself, in your higher self and in the higher frequencies of light in the universe. Otherwise you will get lost. Pisces energy can get absolutely lost in oppression and in darkness. So get aligned with the light and with your inner knowing, with your psychic abilities, with your intuition. This is like super, super, you can get lost on this one. What if you guys are asking about it, guys, it's real, it'll be really easily to get lost. Like I almost wanted to say this is a no, but it'll be a yes if you like entirely trust in yourself and in your guidance. So tread carefully. <laughs> pile number five. Okay, pile number six. Saturn return, age. This is a no. Saturn doesn't ever really say yes. <laughs> Saturn likes to say no. Saturn says you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. If you do do that, then bad things will happen to you. You will will suffer the consequences of your actions. Um, I remember blurting out once at a therapist's office, um, so-and-so is an idiot and they should suffer the consequences of their stupidity, <laughs> which, wow, that was really harsh, right? And I, uh, you know, always kind of felt bad about saying that because I felt like that therapist must have thought I was a really horrible person. Although I understand that therapists are used to dealing with that. But yeah, this is that level of like, don't do it. If you do it, you'll be an idiot and you'll deserve what's coming to you. Oddly enough, when I said that, I was going through my Saturn return. So yeah, Saturn return, no nonsense, guys. You need to just put your nose to the grindstone and do what you know you need to do. You don't get to have any fun right now. There is no fun right now. There is no fun in the Saturn return. The fun comes later. Your fun will come later. Your fun will come after. But yeah, this is a big, big no. Saturn return. Saturn does not care. Saturn is no. Card number seven. Fifth house creativity. This is a yes, especially for any creative endeavors, obviously, anything about putting yourself out there, right? This is Leo. This is shine bright. This is shine your light. This is step into your confidence and be who you were born to be. That's actually all I have to say about this. I think the message for this one is really short. This is one, one of the least complicated cards in the deck. So yes, shine on guys, shine on. Okay, card number eight, Gemini, I think. Honestly, I got to go with a no on this. Something about these like spectral figures, 
Um, I mean, I like Gemini. I have my moon in Gemini. Um, but all this blue, number 15, I feel like your thoughts are trying to trick you. That there are too many, like, because Gemini can think like a lot, like a lot, a lot, <laughs> right? Gemini can get confused about all the different options. Like there's too many things going on. You can see too many possibilities and you can't find your discernment. Gemini isn't always discerning, right? Like L Libra and Aquarius would be the more discerning air energies, but Libra is just like all the thoughts all the time. Go, 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 go. So I feel like you guys have too much going on that you need to find some discernment. So whatever you're asking about probably isn't entirely aligned for you right now. I got to go with a no. And card number nine, Mercury retrograde, a reinvention. Doesn't take a genius to know that Mercury retrograde is a big fat no. There is a silver lining here. Obviously we have reinvention and with your mind retrograding back on something, this is, is actually going to be for your benefit. Just like, you know, when Mercury goes retrograde every, you know, three times a year, right? We don't like it. It sucks. It causes lots of problems. My packages always get sent to the wrong address and the dentists always do something stupid. But, <laughs> you know, the overall retrograding energy is to our benefit. We come out of it having learned something, but Mercury retrograde is like not the time to be doing things that you can avoid, you know, only do what is absolutely necessary, right? And only do what you like know deep, deep down that this is the time for, but all, most things don't do it. Don't do it. Don't bother. Just wait, like just wait a few more weeks, right? Mercury retrograde doesn't wait, doesn't last that long. It's not like a really bad permanent long-term energy, it's just a few weeks and then we get out of it. And then it's a brush of brush, breath, breath of fresh air and we can get back to normal. So for the time being, guys, it's a no. But, you know, you, this waiting energy that you're in is only for a little while and it's going to be good in the long run. And card number 10. Jupiter return benefits. What is a bigger yes than that? You know, we hate it when Saturn comes back around, but we love it when Jupiter comes back around. <laughs> My husband is having his Jupiter return by now. So like, right now, so like by proxy, I'm kind of having a Jupiter return. And I also have a bunch of planets in Capricorn. So Jupiter's like passing all over all of my planets right now. So I got, I got to say, guys, it's really awesome to be having Jupiter, like giving some rewards because a lot of the other tra transits are, <laughs> are not that great. So this is a yes. This is a wonderful yes. This is like go big because this is your time. Um, and it might seem odd because, you know, almost nobody is having a good time right now like the whole planet is, you know, going into recession and yada, yada, yada. But a few of us are going to be blasting forth. A few of us are going to be receiving benefits. A few of us, because, and don't feel bad about it because those of us who are going to be like receiving gifts and getting a little bit ahead, it's because we already had our recession. Like we had our recession, like you know, for the last six years or shit for maybe our entire lives. Right. And it's just, it's our turn. And it's like the yin and the yang, you know, how there's always like the black in the light and like the white in the black. So even if everybody else is having their recession, it's okay for you to have your expansion right now, because that's just the balance. You had your recession in the past right now. It's time for your expansion. So this is a yes. And I think that's it guys. Thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon.